John, I know you've worked with Brendan before in that wonderful 2011 film, The Guard. I'm wondering if you could talk about uh, what inspired you to create such an extraordinary character for him in this movie. Um, it was just as, yeah, it was as we were finishing The Guard in uh, Galway uh, before we were going up to do a few days shooting in uh, Dublin. We were just, um, I, I'd always had the idea of uh, making a film about a good man, a genuinely good person, and then we were starting, you know, knocking it back and forth, and then I was saying, you know, they're probably going to make, because of all the scandals in the Catholic Church, they're going to make lots of films about uh, bad priests. So maybe deal with a good man who's a good priest would be a way of making an original film. Um, and, you know, Brennan had a, was saying he'd had a mentor when he was young, and I said, okay, well, that's the way we approach it, you know. Um, we do the exact opposite of probably what people are expecting, and we follow a good man, you yeah. know. No, it, it was one of those kind of, it was great night. Uh, John Cheadle was walking around with a big uh, bucket of Chinese in the middle of Spiddle in, in Connemara in County Galway that nobody could understand where, where it, he got it, it could from. have come from. And, uh, and we, were, we had a great chat because it was a very hard shoot and all that kind of thing. And we got down to that notion of somebody who had, uh, you know, there had been a priest who was accused of pedophilia in the wrong, one or two of them in the recent past. And obviously there have been a lot of people, who, uh, a lot of them who have been accused justifiably. But I remember talking about, like, our feeling or when this whole thing about how do you deal with something when you're, you know, being vilified for, uh, for trying to dedicate your life to generosity and, uh, and, and all that. It must be awful. And, and one thing led to another. It was, and he said, if I write it, will you do it? And I said, oh, God, yeah. And then he, it just became this amazing... I wasn't quite expecting uh, what turned up, i got to say. Um, well, what happened was, I mean, I, I did a... Yeah, I, I, I always say, I wake up with a hangover, I have to write the script, Brendan goes off and does another movie. Yeah. Uh, but what happened was, so <laughs> I did the, the first draft, um, I sent it to Brendan, and because of our relationship on the guard, you know, I, I would, I've never done that before, sent um, an actor an early draft. And Brendan said to me, you know, you know, a lot, I have a tendency to be too detached and too sort of nihilistic. There's a lot of talk about detachment in the film as well. And Brent said, you know, there's lots of very emotional scenes here, particularly with Kelly's character. And the scenes were there. They were in the script, but they weren't as big as they became, I think. And that was our back and forth because I recognised that that was missing. And, it, and now when I see the movie, it's like, what, you know, why were... Why were those scenes not as expansive as, and emotional as they should have been in the first draft? But at least we got there through the dialogue eventually. You know. well, let, let me talk about the incredible core of emotionalism. Kelly, you and Brendan together have one of the most uh, amazing father-daughter relationships. The work. I didn't feel like work. Mm -hmm. um, you begin with what's on the page, and then you kind of go away and daydream about it. And, um, and then you meet Brendan. <laughs> And you do the scenes, and it's not difficult. It wasn't difficult. I fell in love with everything about this film, and I just watched the last 25 minutes. I didn't. I saw it last at Sundance, and I'm still emotional from this film. I, I every time I, I see more of it, I, I'm, I'm terribly moved by it, and this, it reveals itself to me so much more. But um, to answer your question, it, Brendan was my most favorite <laughs> human being to work with Daddy. ever, period. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's well, lovely. I, had th I had to think, obviously, we had a, a little bit of rehearsal, but um, when Kelly walked on, did the scene, you know, um, memories fade, you know, that, that first scene. I think myself and Brendan looked at each other and went, well, that's fine. We don't have to worry about any <laughs> performances there. I mean, she's now that, and we can move on. But, uh, and then and I was like, oh, you know, when you're not giving notes to an actor, does that mean that they think, are they ignoring me for some reason? Am I doing something wrong? No, you're not giving notes because it's actually completely perfect. <laughs> There's no notes I have to give you. No, it was a, it was a huge <laughs> thing. It was, the, you know, because the spirit, you're reading, you know, when John sent me that draft, I knew Father James at the core from his relationship with his daughter. Uh, that was the one, there was such tenderness in it, there was such tragedy in it, and, uh, uh, and so that's what you have. And then when Kelly arrived, uh, it just, everything became, the, her presence in the thing just completed it in a way. It just became other than words 
you know, it just became something else. I wonder if we could talk about that element of spirituality. I know you've been kind of uh, offhanded saying this is Diary of a Country Priest, the great Robert Bresson film with a couple of gags thrown in. But this is an intensely spiritual film. You divide it up into seven days. You've called it Calvary. Do you want to talk about that element uh, in the Yeah, world? it's also, you have, the, you have the seven day structure. It's also loosely structured around the five stages of grief. Um, so it's denial, anger, bargaining, uh, depression, and acceptance. So I had that loose sort of structure as well. I think what I had in my mind was, I was just starting to think about what you know after what to do after the guard. I didn't want to, I, whatever I was going to do, it would have humour in it. But I wanted to do something that was, you know, pretty different to the guard, just because just to wrong foot an audience. And I was just thinking about you know all those you know Ingmar Bergman used to have all those movies in the '60s and early '70s dealing with spiritual issues and philosophical issues. And I realized, you know, no one's kind of doing that anymore. You know, Transformers. You would <laughs> <say>. Transformers. <laughs> apart apart from Bay's transformation. Like <laughs> you know, you talk about Michael Bay, and it's like, well, we we can't compete with Michael Bay in terms of budget and explosions and CGI, but we can compete in a different way. We compete by having a, a completely original story and trying to do something people haven't seen for a long time, and that's the way you compete. Well, this is uh, you shot this movie in 29 days. Was that it? And uh, I'm wondering if that short shooting period didn't contribute to the intensity that we see. No! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brendan hates a short sh shooting schedule. I, you know, I kind of agree. I would I, agree I with him. It's an accountant's dream, and it's an artist's nightmare, frankly. <laughs> Well, the first week was appalling. It was six day. It's a six day week, and we were doing all the major scenes in the first week, more or less. And of course, the financiers. Once we'd done it, then they gave us two extra days because we'd done that in the first week. But it was a very intense. We got absolutely hammered. I think on the Saturday night in a pub, just uh, you know, I think it was catatonic. It was blackout drinking. Or it was for me. Lines, it was yeah. only lines. Yeah. <laughs> but no, no, you can talk to the uh, yeah the schedule. Yeah, no, the schedule has become, it's an independent hell, really, you know, that's what's happened, is there, because every time a good movie comes from a short schedule, they shorten it again just to see, <laughs> that's the absolute truth, it's not a joke, this is what they absolutely do, they said, my God, they got that done in ten weeks, it has to be possible in eight, like, the guard was, how long? God was 35. 35, so give him 27, why not, take <laughs> seven off, it's, he can do it. And, uh, and it becomes, at some point, untenable. And, the, you know, there was a huge intensity. I mean, to address your question, really, there was a huge intensity. But there was a huge intensity at the reading. You know, there was no... Uh, this stuff is not... It's very personal to everybody. And my experience of how it is played in Ireland and elsewhere is that, is that there's, a, uh, there's a very personal connection between everybody who watches this film or everybody who's in it. Every actor who came in... Uh, and, you know, there was a, a, one after another, an amazing cast coming in. And there was a very personal issue being explored with everybody. I, I'm absolutely certain of it. I know it for it. And so, you know, it was always going to be intense. It didn't need... There was one scene that kind of... I still, you know, again, you get a gift. We were running out of... You know, and John is amazing in terms of preparation. And we, we do keep... Like, we did save all the time we had for what was on set. There, was not, there were no inefficiencies in terms of well, being just uh, left hanging about for no particular reason. The storyboards were there, the preparation was there. The weather may be something you can't deal with, but there was a plan for that. But the scene which broke my heart, uh, you know, and always felt really important to me, even from the very beginning, or from, from whenever I read it first, was the one where he talks to the girl on the road. And uh, he's accused of, you know, inappropriate behavior, and there's the feeling of corruption and in, an insidious thing suddenly enters the room when the father, who is beside himself looking for his child, suddenly says, what's this middle-aged cleric talking to my daughter about? It's one of the most horrible... Uh, that's the one that drives him over the edge in a way. It's one of my favorite ones. But we were... That was really being crushed for time, and almost we almost didn't kind of make it. And I think that's what happens in short schedules. Like, you have to let the damn thing breathe and let people um, explore. Like, we got blessed with weather, we got blessed with a lot of different issues. We were dead lucky to come out with it. Yeah, you know? if anything had gone wrong yeah. uh, in, in weather-wise or any other-wise, we wouldn't have made it, really. So we got lucky if things went right for yeah. us. 